Today we begin our study of functions. What is a function? A function is a relation that pairs two sets of numbers called the domain and range in a specific way. Every element in the domain, in this case the elements are numbers, is paired with exactly one element in the range. So notice the 1, the negative 3, and the 0, there's three numbers in the domain, and each of those numbers has exactly one pair in the range. So 1 is paired with 5. It's not paired with negative 2, just with 5. Negative 3 is paired with negative 2. And 0 is paired with 5. It is okay if the range is paired with more than one element of the domain. Uh, but it is not okay for the domain to have an element paired with more than one element of the range. Function can be represented in many ways. A mapping, like you've just seen, a table of solutions, a graph, a set of ordered pairs, and an equation are the most common representations of functions. But I'm going to show you a sixth representation, and that's the function machine. The function machine shows an expression inside, and that expression is our function. The input is represented by the x, and the output is represented by the y. Our input are our values for x we call the elements of the domain. The output are the values for y. We call those the elements of the range. In our function machines, we will input values for x to calculate values for y. So in this function machine, you'll put in the value for x, get out the value for y, and you can write this, uh, the input and the output together as an ordered pair. So let's try putting in a zero. Notice the x in the expression is changed to a zero because three is multiplied by the x and then subtract 7 to get the output negative 7. The order pair 0, negative 7 means the input was 0 and the output was negative 7. If we plug in 4 for the var variable x, we get 3 times 4 minus 7. Well, 12 minus 7 is 5, so if the input is 4, the output is 5, and that can be represented by the order pair 4, 5. We can use inverse operations to solve for y. So we can basically go backwards through our box. To do this, we will set our function equal to 0 and solve for x. So let's go back to the same function machine. Again, the input is x and the output is y. Well, what if we already know the output is negative 1? How do we figure out the input? Well, if you go backwards through your box, instead of multiplying by 3 and subtracting 7, you'll go in the reverse order and use the inverse operation. So instead of subtracting 7, you will add 7 to negative 1. And instead of dividing by 3, or multiplying by 3, we will divide by 3, which is the inverse operation. Really what you're doing is solving an equation. If you set the expression 3x minus 7 equal to negative 1, you will add 7 to negative 1 to get positive 6, and then you will divide by 3 to get positive 2. That means the input is 2 when the output is negative 1. So the order pair 2, negative 1 can be used to represent that input and output. Now, Let's practice evaluating, and that is to take values for x and plug them into a function machine. This is for your practice. Once you have plugged in your values for x, find the corresponding value for y, drag and drop it into place. Pause the video. Try this yourself. Check your answers. Did you get it right? If you put a negative 1 in place of x, 3 times negative 1 minus 7 is equal to negative 10. If you take a 1 and put it in place of x, 3 times 1 minus 7 is negative 4. And if you take 3, 3 times 3 minus 7, the output is 2. So your values for y were negative 10, negative 4, and 2 in that order. Now, let's try in reverse. These are your outputs, the 8, the negative 4, and the 11. Can you figure out the input? Pause the video. Try these yourself.
Did you get them right? The Y was 8. You would add 7 to 8 to get 15, then divide by 3 to get 5. If the output is negative 4, you would add 7 and negative 4 to get 3. Divide by 3 to get 1. If your output is 11, you'll add 7 to 11 to get 18. Divide by 3 to get 6. All right, let's try finding the range with the given domain. Now, often you're told the domain, but it doesn't always say x is equal to. So here it does say x is equal to. We do know the domain are our elements of, are the x's are the elements of the domain. So take each of these, plug them into the function one at a time. So we'll replace the x with the negative one. We'll replace the x with zero and replace the x with five. When you replace with negative 1, you get out a positive 7. When you replace with 0, you get a 5. If you replace x with 5, you get negative 5. So the range are the numbers 7, 5, and negative 5. Normally, we put those numbers in order. So you'll notice the negative 5, then the 5, and then the 7 are listed in order. All right, now let's choose a range for each domain. Try this yourself. Each element of the domain would go in place of the variable x inside the function machine. Your output will give you your range. Pause the video. Try these yourself. Did you get them right? Notice the function machine says x minus 3. So if you do negative 2 minus 3, you get negative 5. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So the range for the first domain is negative 5, negative 3, negative 1. The second domain is negative 3, negative 1, and 1. Replace x with negative 3, and negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4, and 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So the second range is negative 6, negative 4, negative 2. Now, let's do this in reverse. Let's solve using inverse operations to find the domain. We're given the range. Remember the range uh, represent the elements for y. So each number, you will replace your y with these numbers and then work your way backward through your function machine. Instead of adding one, you will subtract one. And instead of multiplying by two, you will divide by two. So 2x plus 1 equals negative 3. Subtract the 1 to get negative 4. Divide by the 2 to get negative 2. Now 2x plus 1 is equal to positive 1. Subtract the 1 to get 0. Divide by the 2 and you still have 0. So that means your input values, which are your domain, are negative 2 and 0. Now you try. Take the function machine. Take the given range. Remember, these are your y values. Calculate or solve to find your x values. And then choose the domain. Drag and drop into the correct spot. Pause the video. Try these yourself. Did you get them right? Notice the function machine says x plus 2. So if your first y value is negative 3, when you subtract 2, you get negative 5. If your y value is negative 1, when you subtract 2, you get negative 3. And if your y value is 6, when you subtract 2, your answer is 4. So the domain was negative 5, negative 3, 4 for your first range. In your second range, your first y value is negative 2. So negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Your second y value is 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Your third y value is 7. 7 minus 2 is 5. Now, these are three different representations of the function that's represented by the function machine. Take the numbers 3, 4, and 5 and place them in the correct place. Pause the video. Try this yourself. Did you get it right? 
Notice the expression inside the box was negative x plus 4. So your equation would have to be y is equal to negative x plus 4. In your table, the input is negative 1 when the output is 5. So negative negative 1 is like a double negative, which gives you positive 1 plus 4 gives you the output 5. So in the table, you should have put your 5. And then in your order pair, if the output is 1, when you subtract the 4, you get negative 3. And when you divide by negative 1 to get rid of the negative in front of your x, you will end up with a positive 3. So your answer was positive 3. Input of positive 3, output of positive 1. Did you get them right? In summary, domain and range of functions. You input the domain. That is, you put it into the function in place of the variable x. And then you simplify to determine the range or the output, which are the y values. You will solve an equation using inverse operations to find a domain for a given range. In other words, if you know the y values or the outputs, you take each one and set it equal to your function and solve that to find your input or your domain of your function.